ourselves, but the world needs to get. Imagine how many people need to know that they are actually loved by God, you know. And unfortunately, children at school today learn that it's the daddy universe that gave them birth, but they need to know that it's uh, the heavenly dad that gives them birth and love and beginning and the ultimate wonderful end in his kingdom. Okay, so w welcome everyone again. Zoomites, where are you? No, I don't have them here. Zoomites, nice to see you there too. Um, I hope you can hear us well as well. So how is everyone? Are you blown away? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, we were we were really fortunate. Okay, we were just fortunate that the wind somehow slowed down to reasonable uh, levels. Uh, the trampoline was not flying this night. Okay, you remember my story last time? Trampoline flying to the neighbor, and so I was so glad. I actually tied the trampoline with a string, and my my son said it's a joke. What I've done because it was just a string, you know, I tried to tie it to the gate just in case it would fly. Anyway, we are here, we are here together. And we want to use the time well to redirect our minds to the cross. Now it's, it has never been popular topic. Why should it be uh, the place of shame? And death has never been a popular topic. You know, my mom, anytime death has been taboo of the family. It's like even mentioning that somebody could die. It's like, don't even talk about it. But that's the thing we are all facing every week. Uh, you know that two of our sisters just today... Um, or this week lost their mom. Uh, there might be others <clears throat> among us who lost their loved one. So we do need to talk <clears throat> about death. It's because we have an answer to death through Jesus Christ. So we can face it with a very different attitude. Yeah, we are not moaning like the unbelievers. We still face the pain but we are facing it with a very different attitude. I don't know if you remember Dostoevsky, uh, who I would recommend everyone to read, but he mentioned that we are all uh, like uh, people living in a, in a huge deep pit. Uh, we know we will fall down eventually, but we are just trying to hold onto the branches and the stones in that huge pit, just whatever we can hang on to, but we know we will go there eventually. But with Christ, we also know we will come out of that. Okay? So let's, let's, let's talk about that topic. Um, what do I have here? I want to mention a few sentences that certain people said at the end of their lives. What would you like? your final sentence to be on the deathbed? What would you like the last words to be? There is a book called Last Words of Notable People. So imagine we are notable, we are noticeable, um, and we would be in that book and they would say, you know, brother, sister, or whatever said this, that, was, that these were his last words. What would they be? Just think about it. I know it may need more time, but just think about it. What would you, imagine you have unbelieving family, they all stand around you and you have just the strength to say your last words. What would you like that to be? It's difficult, isn't it? Depending how much strength you have. Is it for one sentence, two sentences? Yeah. I tried hard. And I am not happy with perhaps, but probably the best for me at this stage would be life is a wonderful gift of God, but still the best is yet to come. Seek it and you shall find the only lasting treasure. 
Seek it. Seek it. We were just studying with one young man this week on Zoom. He's preparing to be baptized. And I try to emphasize, you know, faith in a new way. Faith for Christians is not passive faith. It's an active faith. And what I mean by that is that you actively seek God and you seek his will. It's not like just sitting back and just saying, well, I trust in Jesus. Or just sitting in the church and singing, I love you, Lord, and I, 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 I trust in you. It's a fight. It's a seeking to be able to express the faith correctly, to understand it correctly, to pass it on correctly, and to live it out. To step back when we are impatient. To stop anger and step back and leave it in God's hands. So seek it. Seek the kingdom. That's maybe one emphasis that I would like to make. You know, at the end of our lives, let me mention, just as a, as a you know, I don't know if you know Richard Mellon. I didn't know him. But there is a company called Alcoa. Anybody knows? They work with aluminium. Yeah, quite a big company, Alcoa. But you know, the, 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 the billionaires owning it had a, between them, a kind of a, a tug game. So anytime they would see each other, they would say, you are it now. Okay. And next time they would, you are it. And, um, um, and, and so what, what do you think was the last, you know, the, the brother who was dying first said, you must stay and remain the it. Yeah. He stayed the it until his, he died. Sir Isaac Newton, very humble man. He says, I don't know what I may seem to the world, but as to myself, I seem to have been only like a, like a boy playing on the seashore and diverting myself now and then in finding a smoother pebble or a prettier shell than the ordinary. Whilst the great ocean of truth lay all undiscovered before me. Isaac Newton. If we are saved just by intelligence and knowledge, you know, we may have struggled. But, you know, we, we are not saved by just knowledge and intelligence. We are saved by the master. And Isaac Newton admitted, I feel like a boy playing. You know, Winston Churchill said, I'm bored with it all. You know, life can be tiring. And at the end of the life, we may say, I've got enough. It's time for me to go. And um, I like, yeah, Albert Abraham Mickelson. He was, all his life, he was measuring the speed of light. Do you know anybody him? Yeah. I didn't know him. Yeah, so it's okay. But Albert Abraham Mickelson, he was measuring the speed of light. He died when he was making record about the speed of light. You know, I will read the last sentence. That's how they found him. The following is a report on the measurement of the velocity of light made at the Irvin Ranch near Santa Ana, California, during the period of September 1929 to. Sometimes we just leave the work unfinished, okay? And it's fine too, somebody else will step in. That's why whatever you do, whenever you lead in the church, you plan who will take over. Yeah, sometimes some people are elected for, they feel like, you know, I'm elected, so I'm elected for good. No, we may serve, you know, next year I may serve in a different position. You never know. So we all have unfinished work that will stay behind us. We need to plan ahead. And then, of course, John Arthur Spankeling. He was executed for murder, but he said, capital punishment means those without the capital get the punishment. I, I don't think he was right. I, I think he was just a rebellious. You know, he was fighting back. And we can, of course, freely disagree, but this is, there is another who faced the capital punishment and he was not without the capital. He was actually the owner 
of it all. And nothing compares to his last words. Anybody would like to try? What was Jesus' last words on the cross? And if it's not the finished? Not finished? Not finished? It is finished. Yeah, it is definitely. Yeah. But what was the final words? That's it. Wow. I want our lives to finish on that note. Thank you. Clarification. Abba Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When we say spirit, you mean life. The, the life that was given in the beginning. Abba Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. It was a favorite scripture by John Haas, Luther, Melanchthon, and of course, Stephen being stoned. Also Bernard, one of the um, martyrs, um, and, and many, many others who also faced the capital punishment. I mentioned John Rogers a few weeks ago because we were celebrating on the 4th of February, John Rogers's in Smithfield in London was burned on the stake, the Bloody Mary, Got him first, yeah? So John Rogers, the same, singing while dying. These people said the same words. They are actually from a psalm of David. Okay? They are from a psalm 31 and 5. Last words as a prayer. Because it's a prayer. It's a prayer of dedication. You know, sometimes we have last words, we speak to others. Sometimes people speak about themselves. But Jesus directs his words to God, the Father. And maybe if people see us praying our final words, they will never forget it. And I think Paul was changed by that too. As he saw Stephen being able to pray Jesus's prayer to Abba Father. You know that David said the Lord. David said the Lord I commit my spirit into your hands. Jesus says Abba Father. Daddy. Daddy. Jesus was personal. I know you heard this many times but we don't always take it. We've just read with Samuel this week that God spoke to Moses as a friend to a friend. That's the same kind of dynamics. That's how close Jesus had to our God. May we have that relationship, that closeness. Let's not approach him just as a master, although he is. And we must never forget that he is the Lord, the master. He is the boss. Whatever we do, he cannot help it, but he created it all. He gave it rules. His principles will stand. But he is our father too. Abba, Father. Into God's hands, I commit my spirit. What does it mean to commit? Well... Commit, it means to give. In trust. We have trustees in companies here. Yeah? You entrust them the work because you trust them. Yeah? So you entrust your, and Jesus did, entrusted his spirit into God's hands. Now, look at David, yeah? Let's go back to the psalm. Just listen to what's the situation this psalm is written in. Just so that we don't think that David is just singing. Because David was most of his life a warrior. He faced death 
own daily, sometimes weekly, sometimes monthly, but death was always, you know, it's like the Ukrainians now. My wife is watching daily what's Putin doing. Yeah? They will, they, they, daily. Yeah, my wife is from Ukraine, okay? So we are watching it very closely. And we don't trust that man, but we trust God. Okay? Look at David. My life is consumed by anguish. Have you ever felt that way? Have you ever felt that way? You know, you may want to go to church or you have a difficulty in your household. You, ha- you are facing uh, the job interview or job difficulty or at church. Whatever the challenge, you may sometimes be consumed by anguish. It's that state when you cannot really do much. It's like it's completely holding you. You cannot do it. That's David. He's consumed by anguish. And my years by groaning. That's David. Yeah, there were times of harp, you know, maybe before Samuel came. Before Samuel came to David, maybe he had some harp time. But after that, he was a warrior. He had difficult times. And he was not a killer. He was a warrior who tried to defend the people is the same with Putin. He will get his way done anyway. He will tire you out. And sometimes you may just need to step in because there is no other way. That's where David was. It was either them or us. With God's help, he conquered. So that's David. My strength fails. That's what he said. That's the sound where he says the same sentence Jesus said on the cross. You know, sometimes we say, I don't have strength. Well, welcome home. (laughs) It's so many times we don't have strength. Yeah, sometimes in the morning, you know, it's like you are looking for the shower, you know, (laughs) how to, yeah, okay. What is happening? Which day is it? Yeah. You know that because sometimes you don't sleep, you don't sleep your eight hours. It's five. And sometimes you, it's eight, but you didn't sleep four of them because you worried about what's happening next day. So that's David. David knows and Jesus knows that kind of situation because my affliction and my bones grow weak. But listen to this. This is how the, the psalm starts and this is how it ends. I will read the first sentence and the last. It says, in you, Lord, I have taken refuge. And the last sentence, and so be strong and take heart, all of you who hope in the Lord. That's what you can do. Even when we are weak, imagine the power from within. You know that the power to make decision is still there. Nuclear bomb is nothing compared to the strength you have to actually make a decision. Despite my weakness, I will still go on. Be strong and take heart, all of you who hope in the Lord, and I will make the next step. I am weak, but I will make the next step so that I can make the next step. And then on. I will have to move on because this was supposed to be sermonette. Yeah. Psalm, the middle middle verse in the Bible, all of you know, 118 verse 9. This is the middle verse verse of the Bible. We should remember that. It's, it's nice to have something that is easy to remember. The sound, the, the verse in the middle of the whole Bible is 118 verse 9. It says, it is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in men. And I'm telling you, it's not just Putin. <laughs> because I don't trust that man and many others, but it's in general. We put trust in God. And my spirit. Jesus says, I put my spirit into God's hands. That's all we have. If we don't have the spirit, enjoy your life. Well, you don't. That's all you have. That's the, always the last we have. Okay. The last thing we have is the spirit. Yeah? At the end of life, you're not thinking about, you know, 
If, is the roof okay? Maybe some do, you know, some of the DIY men are thinking, oh, will the children be okay in the house that I built? You know, will the roof stand? Especially when Eunice is coming, you know? But, but the spirit is the last we have and we will have to give it back anyway. You know that Psalm 31.5, into your hands I'm committing my spirit, is the evening prayer of the Jews. It's the evening prayer of the Jews, hoping that I will get it back in the morning. Okay? Imagine now Jesus on the cross, see you in the morning. Christians in catacombs in Rome saying, see you later, or see you in the morning. Okay, I just want to encourage us. Oh, by the way, 522, my hope is built on nothing less. We, we sang it, yeah, at the beginning. My hope is built on nothing else. Did you know this man called Edward Moat? You didn't, I didn't, but we did learn about him yesterday. Edward Moat is the composer. He's an English composer, a Baptist, a layman, composing 150 different hymns. He's the man who helped to build one of the chapels in London, I think. And they, they in his honor, they said, look, we will put the deed in your name. And he said, no, I don't need the deed. Just give me the pulpit. And if, if I preach Christ, keep me there. If I stop, remove me. <laughs> that's Edward Mode. Yeah, that's him. Now, he said his last words were, the truth is, I've been preaching the truth. I have been preaching. I'm now living upon. And they'll do very well to die upon. <laughs> they are very useful. Sometimes we appreciate them most when we are ill, weak, or actually dying. So let us trust God. Do you want a second class ticket or a first class ticket? If you can choose, it's the same price. You want first class ticket on the plane? First class, yeah, first, first, yeah. Second, any second class, yeah. Nobody. Everybody wants first class. That's good. Then listen to, uh, to, to Moody's first and second class ticket principle. So if you have a second class ticket, it's Psalm 56.3. It says, when I'm afraid, I will trust in you. Do you want the first class ticket? I will trust in you and not be afraid. <laughs> As we come to the table, remembering our master, he doesn't want us to come to the table as if we are dying. We are still living, okay? Because sometimes we celebrate communion almost like we are slowly finishing life. That's not what Christ wants us to do. He wants, he set an example that he's willing to die. He lived until the end. He was not sorry about himself. He was saying, you know, you worry about your children, not about me. I'm worried about you. Let's live this life until the end by the example Jesus said. And even if we are broken like his body is broken, even if we are, if we are bleeding in this life, let's still carry on that mission. Because the worst that can happen to us is we die, but that's already sorted. It's provided for. So it's, I know it's not okay, but it's okay. Because as long as we have the second resurrection, uh, the, the first resurrection, we are sorted. So let us trust him as we come to the table this day.